Good evening, everyone. My name is Rob Goodwin, chair of the DRB. I call this meeting to order. Um, can everyone on the Zoom platform hear me in the Orca Media hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can. I can hear it. Sounds good. Um, so we'll do a mic test and uh, introduce the board members. So from my right here. Uh, Sharon Allen. Kevin O'Connell. Meredith Crandall, staff. I'm Rob Goodwin, the chair. We have Michael Lazorczyk. Michael Lazorczyk, thank you. <laughs> Gene? Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, so. Gene, just so you know, you were very quiet. You might want to speak up a little, a little bit more when you ask questions and talk later on, okay? You got it. I just raised my volume. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Gene. So we have five members present. Um, Jean is an alternate and will be a voting member this evening. Um, and um, with that, we'll go on to the first order of business, which would be a review by Meredith of the remote meeting procedures. Yep, we don't have any just general members of the public on tonight. We have a representative for our tonight's loan application, um, but I'm going to do this so that um, people who are attending or watching the ORCA media or we're streaming will know how to get on. Um, all right, there we go. So um, for anyone who is viewing this meeting via ORCA media, you can participate in tonight's development review board meeting by using the Zoom platform. You can do that with either typing this web link into your um, browser, and it should take you right into the meeting, or you can call in using this phone number and putting in this meeting ID when prompted. Um, if anyone is having problems accessing the meeting, please email me at mcrandall at Montpelier hyphen vt.org. I'll be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, for So Aaron, right now, you're the only one attending Zoom that hasn't done this before. Um, just know that turning on your video is optional. If you are having issues with bandwidth, I advise keeping your video off and just um, that way reserving your bandwidth for the audio. For everyone attending, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. Um, and a reminder that the Zoom chat function should be used only for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Uh, we can skip over a bunch of this because we don't have any public members attending. Um, if we have somebody pop in, I'll, I'll re revert down back to it. Um, in the event that I find out that the public is unable to access this meeting, it will need to be continued to a time and place certain. As I noted previously, I would find out about that via email. I will now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Thank you, Meredith. Um, so comments from the chair. It's been a long time since I've been here. Thank you for letting me have a uh, vacation uh, and uh, well done in conducting smooth meetings in my absence. Um, be careful, don't do it too well. You might have to, you know, take over from me someday. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, yeah, we have one application uh, this evening. Um, it's like no members of the public. Um, my understanding is that Aaron is with the applicant. Um, and um, we will get to you in a few minutes, but our order of business prior is approval of the minutes from July 18th. Did we, did we do approval of the agenda? Oh, we, we did not. We did not. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. All right, we have a motion by Kevin and a second by Sharon to approve the agenda. Um, how do members vote, Sharon? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Gene? Yes. And Michael? Yes. All righty. The agenda is approved. All righty. So now we are on to approval of the minutes from the eight, July 18th meeting. Um, just double check here whether we nope. can. Nope. We've only got two people. Uh. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll hold that one to the next one. Very least. Um, so next order of business is the um, applicant for 352 River Street. Um, 
She is Montpelier Tractor LLC is the owner. And um, would you like to come up to the table and inter introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, Aaron is the uh, architect of the project. Okay. Well, yeah. if, if you think you might speak, it's good to be there. Okay. And then we'll know who's available because we're actually going to have to swear everybody in who might talk. Perfect. Adam Lane, store manager for Tractor Supply. So, uh, I opened the building and there's this 2006. Yeah. Okay. And Aaron, would you want to introduce yourself? Yep. I'm Aaron Blue with Onyx Creative. We're the architect, engineers, uh, and so forth for the project. This, Mr. Chair, I, I, I would. Uh, suggest that perhaps uh, Meredith could give us a, a brief uh, summary. Okay. Mm -hmm. We can do that. Um, yeah. That's where the business is first, but we can do that after your summary. Yeah, either one. You which go ahead, one, Meredith. Whichever way we want to do it is fine. I, I, just, <laughs> I just didn't want to lose it. I didn't know if, yep. if you had it in your mind. Yep. yep. Okay. Go ahead, Meredith. Um, so I'm just going to do a brief overview of how you know, general aspects of the project, um, and then you'll get sworn in as witnesses, okay? And then you guys will get to do your presentation. Um, so um, this is coming before the board because Tractor Supply is proposing to do, you know, it's, sometimes it's hard to see if it's a new building or an addition, but because they're connected, we're actually gonna, we've been calling it an addition, um, but it's a new aspect of the structure that's more than 2,000 square feet in area. And so that has triggered major site plan, um, which then follows on all these other triggers um, of things like um, a more extensive, you know, landscaping plan, things like that, that often would get pulled in. Um, now, there, there's a few different things called out in my staff report. Um, the, you know, biggest one really does actually have to do with the landscaping. Um, I did not require a landscaping plan be submitted with this um, because in the last set of revisions to our zoning regulations, we put in this lovely little exemption for certain projects, trying to, to weed out all the little projects where you wouldn't have a change in impervious surface. You're not disturbing the soil. You don't need new screening. So why do you need a landscaping plan? The intention was for that to be small projects, things like you're putting in a new sign or you're changing light fixtures. And so that all triggers site plan, but we didn't want to trigger a big reevaluation of landscaping for that. Well, this project, even though it's a 3000 square foot plus addition, doesn't add impervious surface, doesn't need new screening, doesn't disturb soil. <laughs> and so I said, well, technically, I don't think this is supposed to have a landscaping plan, even though that may not be what we intended, but that's the board's going to have to take a look at that. Um, if the board feels like the, the intent language in that clause is actually controlling, then we can can move on from there if they decide they want to see a landscaping plan and come back and try and meet all those landscaping requirements. But that would mean trying to bring the landscaping into conformance. So that's shade trees on the parking lot, that's street trees. It's a lot of, it's a lot more analysis. And I tried to lay that out in the staff report. That's really the biggest question mark that I found in here. Um, the rest of the project you know, there's some things in here in red where the board needs to make a determination, but I've suggested how I see the path forward there. Um, that's what I've got. Okay. I'm sure we'll have more questions for you as we, <laughs> as we move along here, but thank you for the summary. Yep. Um, so I'll first provider to you guys providing testimony. We'd like to swear you in. Um, looks like there's just two people here that are going to be providing testimony. Um, so um would you raise your right hand and uh aaron uh you can raise your right hand and we trust you i have it raised <laughs> great do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury i do i do thank you um so we will turn it over to you or aaron to give a summary of the uh of the project and do what you want aaron is in charge here and Aaron, feel free to share your screen if that's something that you're comfortable with. Okay, I just the question I have is um, 
I'm assuming that that you guys there in chambers have the what was what was submitted with yes. respect yes. to the plans and everything. Yeah, All right, and, it, it's and I can share my screen if there's a finer point that needs to come up if you're not in a space to do that because um, I have everything the whole packet up on my computer. It's really whatever um, is easiest. For, for you all, I have the packet. I went and where the agenda was, I made sure I downloaded it. That way I had the same thing that you guys had. So um, it's it's really whatever's easiest for you guys. You go ahead, Aaron. Okay, give me one second. Now, if I mess this up, I, I gonna say I'm sorry already. All right, well, we got your back if it doesn't work. Okay. So, yeah, let's see, there we go. Let me know if you guys can see that. It, it's starting. It's taking a minute to load. There we go. Yep. Thanks. Okay. I'm just going to start with our cover sheet um, and then kind of just skip ahead to our site plan first. Um, I'm sorry. Can you turn your volume up a little bit? Um, yeah. Is that any better? Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So I'm just going to start with our site plan, um, existing tractor supply, um, existing site, existing site features for the most part. Um, the intent here is kind of twofold on behalf of Tractor Supply, and that is a garden center or greenhouse addition um, that that is proposed to take place within the existing fenced area that Tractor Supply already has and uses as outdoor sales space. Um, the other component, which um, for, for this meeting you probably um, – aren't too concerned with, but it's also an interior remodel that we're doing. Um, and we've kind of lumped these projects in together. Um, so you may see additional stuff in this, this package that was distributed that's more related to interior fixtures and paint and freshing up the, the interior. So um, I'm going to focus on really the exterior portion. And that's this garden center that we have just outside of the building. It is connected to the building. Um, although it is a freestanding independent structure that is um, more along the lines of a pre-engineered building and it, it gets clad in polycarbonate so it keeps plants healthy and they can also store um, more of the seasonal type merchandise um, in this space. So, and if anybody has any questions as I go, please just stop me. Um, this is more of our life safety plan. We, we, even though we're adding on and we're cutting in an automatic door from the existing, call it brick and mortar space, um, we do independently egress this addition, um, even though, you know, people could still enter from this garden center back into the store and vice versa. There are point of sales, both existing on the inside, new point of sale um, on the exterior, um, we do have a demo plan, um, very simple, <laughs> really almost too simple, um, mainly because we're relocating a uh, propane tank, which is currently there. We're just shifting it over and giving ourselves room for this new garden center. And then um, at each of the, the post locations for the, for the garden center columns, we have little two by two squares that we cut out, pour the footers and pour it back in. Um, same material, whether that's asphalt or concrete, um, it will remain to match everything else. Uh, these are just door and hardware. So one thing I did want to bring up or to make note of, I did see in the staff report, um, Meredith, that, that there was a question on the GLA um, and what size the addition actually is. Um, this addition is scheduled to be 66 foot deep by 52 foot wide. Um, so that gives us a 3,432 square foot uh, addition of GLA. In our life safety plan, we kind of go to the inside of that. So from a building permit perspective, we would call that 3,406 square feet. But a little bit more square footage is actually your overall you know, GLA or GFA, sorry. Okay, so, yep, so we've got the, because for us, GFA also, so this is all, the whole thing is going to have your height, same height, or some yes. of it's going to, okay. 
So well, said- I, no, I, there, it'll be um, down the center of this. Well, uh, down two centers is going to be ridges on each side, but. But I'll still, I'll still walking height. I'm just trying to correct. Yep. Because we've got our footprint versus the usable space, right? Your GFA is your usable space, and then yep. your footprint. That's all. Yep. Okay. So you said three thousand four hundred thirty-two. Thirty-two is the actual footprint. Got it. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. And what were those dimensions again? Just to. It is um, sixty-six foot deep. And fifty-two foot wide. Got it. Yep. Got it. Thank, Thank you. you. Nope. No problem. So, um, really, from there, um, yeah. Uh, uh, other than the, the garden center and relocating the propane tank, um, we're not doing a whole lot in this uh, new fixtures. They're going to reorganize the fixtures and their their merchandise layout in this space. And I'll actually kind of skip ahead to that. Um, so you know. D different materials and fixtures and you can see they have racks and stuff which are on the exterior around this addition um this addition again we call it an addition and i know you were talking about whether it's a new building or addition we refer to it as an addition it's it's being kind of tacked on to the existing building so um but it's all within and behind that existing fence that's there today um not messing with that not changing the size of that or, or anything like that. So, so it's all within the. It's all it's all within the existing footprint of the fenced area. Is what I believe I just heard you say. That is true. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, there's uh, additional uh, what shelves being built, and what what is the uh, uh, type of uh, uh, physical improvements that that could be going on there. Well, on the on the exterior, um, you're going to see a, a lot of the same merchandise. The fence panels, um, their their posts. Um, I, I can't even. I, I see kind of. I know it based on what this plan is. Uh, store manager there could probably be able to tell you better what they actually put out there than I could. But um, was the question? Re sorry, was the question referring to what's going to be on outside or inside the greenhouse? Do you mean the, the actual like things for sale or yeah. do you mean okay. yeah yeah and how are they stored i mean are they put on shelves are they put on you know what what exactly oh, oh. so it's it's a uh, the inside of the greenhouse will have like the plastic racking for uh plants that kind of thing and then um i, I think basic pallet racking i mm -hmm. believe okay in the back side and down the side i think is how it works right yep yeah, that's accurate. Related right yeah. to the racking, that's that's correct. Um, you know, we have pallet yeah, racks that are in there. Yeah, pallet racks are in there. Plant racks, they're multi-tiered that you see. You know, I don't want to use a competitor's name, but you you see it at Lowe's and Home Depot. You know, um, yeah, you get into that a lot. But yeah, it's it's very much in line, the same same idea, same concept, if you will. Yep. All right. So from here, I'll go to the elevations. Um, the, the roof, the front, the sides is all steel frame with polycarbonate material to let the sunlight in. Um, the, there is a, an extra gable that you see that we have a pickup area and this, this allows uh, customers to come into this area and do you know pickup of the larger goods you know the the bigger thick fence panels uh bags of topsoil or mulch you know um, stuff like that so we kind of have uh, an extra if, if you look at the top elevation that we have here and you have the front of the building it, you have two gables worth which is the garden center uh the third one uh, if i'm all the way to the left is just an open sided you know it's it's metal top metal front sides but it's open sided um and that's kind of just a we call it the drive through gable um but that's kind of just what covers and you know tries to round off the rest of this this space that we have um as i mentioned the front sides rear of the addition are all going to be polycarbonate or roll up curtains to allow for ventilation and everything like that um you know i don't know 
what it's like in Vermont right now, but I know here in Cleveland, Ohio, it's quite warm and quite humid. So it does, that does help in allowing some of the, the heat to get out and stuff like that during this time of year. So really that's the, um, that's kind of the crux of it all. It's, uh, uh, what, what we're trying to do. And this is actually, um, a nationwide thing that we've been doing with tractor supply. We're doing this, you know, all across the country, uh, very similar, some differences, you know, as you can imagine. Um, but, um, this is kind of the, the new brand that tractor supply is a company. This is what we're working towards. Aaron, can I just ask that, um, on, underneath that drive through uh, portion, the gate there, that's, that's an existing road, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the little passage through, or I don't want to call it a drive through because it's really not a drive through. I, every time I say drive through, somebody thinks of Starbucks or <laughs> something, coffee. Yeah, something like that. And that just really, you know, throws a, a, a wrench through everything. But yes, this, this drive aisle where we have the um, painted markings of one way that's, that's existing today. We've actually reduced the size of it. Some, you know, it was wider in the past when we've now taken the new, the new criteria for tractor supply now is just a basically a singular 14 foot wide lane. Um, there's not a lot of traffic that comes through here. Um, and it's, it's all controlled. Um, you know, the front gates are controlled. That's they're not open all the time. And the rear gate, as a matter of fact, what we're going to do for that is that will get an automatic opener on the rear gate. That way, once a customer does come in here and pick up, it'll have a feedback loop, um, saw cut into the ground that will activate as a customer pulls up to it to where it opens and and lets them out but they do do control we we, we don't have that on the front because we want the store associates to control who's entering and and coming into that space so that would be those front gates are manually operated by a, a store employee and so how do the customers exit uh, straight through they would go straight through and there's another gate on the rear um that opens automatically but like do they go about around the building or is can you go back to the uh, larger yep. site plan yeah the, and, the, the same way they do now yeah and it, it yeah. works the same way that right. this yeah. was then when gotcha. they got approved the original yep. build of it yep all right so that that drive through also is where we go to with curbside going forward because our like right now you park out front and call the store well now with this they come in the front gate, call the store. They come through and we load the curbside right out of the greenhouse. That's what that little front corner thing is in the, in the greenhouse. Um, if, if I can, Aaron, uh, sure. we, we have this in four stores in Vermont already. Um, Bradford was built this way. And if you, um, I, I've been filling in in Bradford while the store manager gets their knee replaced once a week. And it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, just to, just for clarity here, so that they come through and then they go around the building and Take, take a left and go back out take a way. left yeah and so then like deliveries for the store like come around the other way and that's that is that you can fit well yeah. two tractor trailers in there now because we unload them there sometimes but gotcha. yeah. Right yeah. There. Yep. The yeah. Go. perfect but they yeah they do come around that way I, I, I four or five today with gates and pellets and other stuff through the yard so yeah, yeah. and then the common. surface of that gardens well of the the, the existing fenced in area is that paved asphalt or is that concrete, concrete. concrete. Oops, sorry Aaron. that is concrete right uh you know i, I was gonna try to pull up my photos because i didn't i don't know the answer to that right off the top of my head it's okay. currently concrete and okay it is, it is the same in bradford it is the same exact yeah. concrete that's in the yard so the plan is like the floor is going to stay the same and you're just yeah. building up and a roof on top yeah, yeah. Got it. absolutely yep we're not changing the existing pavement it'll just yeah. remain Perfect. Yeah, they're gonna like paint some new lines for the aisles, stuff like that, and then punch holes to put in the supports for the garden yep. center and the new arch. But and that's why I was like, I can't say that they're disturbing soil. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't come across like that. I mean, uh -huh. I mean, uh, yeah. logically speaking, it seems that this is just an expansion of the existing. Sure. Yeah, and it's. I mean, exactly. It's, it's something that we intended to catch to make people then bring their landscaping up to the new standards, but the language we wrote doesn't seem to do that. And I think, I think that you would want to uh, give the benefit of the doubt 
uh, to the applicant in a situation where it's not clear. Absolutely. That's that's my understanding right. of the and way we normally way, do things. Well, as I, as I was reviewing this, that that's what keep, kept jumping out at me. I kept thinking, well, yeah. we could make this more complicated, but you know, is that fair to the applicant? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it seems pretty straightforward. I just a couple more questions. Um, any proposed um, like compressors or generators or any extra utilities um, or whatnot? Nope. All, all existing utilities, all no new connections to anything um, underground, um, no new water taps, no upsizing or anything like that. The only thing that potentially uh, this, this space will be, will be sprinkled. Um, so there will be fire protection coverage. Um, now we typically, uh, the way we do this with tractor supply and actually with a lot of retail is we have, that's kind of a design build. So um, the only thing that may come up with regards to any type of utilities would be um, any type of upsizing we may need to do to um, get that, that fire protection system to be able to provide the coverage required for this space. And then you say it's a greenhouse or what I'm just trying to understand here. So it will it be like heated, like a greenhouse, uh, you know, with like ventilation fans or whatnot, or is it, um, we do, we do do fans. They're just regular fans inside to move air. Um, but no, we're not providing air conditioning or anything like that. I mean, it's, it's polycarbonate. So we, you know, what you kind of put in might be just lost anyways. So, um, we're not, not intending to use to do anything like that. Okay. Sharon, uh, there was a question about the lighting um, for the greenhouses. Is that yep. right? Uh, and about shielding. Did you read that in the staff report? Aaron? I did. I did, and I actually had my engineers ahead of this um, provide me with a cut sheet of what what we currently specify. Uh, the response that I got from them, and uh, uh, let me pull that email up. Um, Please. And, and I will tell you exactly what the, they, they're telling me that it is fully shielded. The, the problem with the cut sheet is they're telling me that most interior lights don't actually say that they're shielded. So we looked at the cut, the physical cut of that in the diode, um, which is what is emitting the light is above the bottom of the enclosure and then there is there is a lens that sticks down below that but the actual light emitting diode is above above that enclosure and meredith i can send you this cut sheet to um after this meeting so you yeah. have it yep no if you could do that if you could try and share it just so that it's technically on the record tonight yep. um, sure you see if you can find it because technically for them for the board to be able to consider it they need to see it although your testimony saying that that's how it's going to be B is guys, um yeah. yep okay i can see, you guys yeah. see this yep okay, dimensional so, and mounting details yep and then the diode is just above the bottom of the actual body of the light i can zoom into that if you'd like yep and that's what i look for when i look at whether or not something is fully shielded that where the actual light emitting part is needs to be above sure. your side solid yeah. pieces what's the and what is the intensity of that uh, led uh, i think it was nine thousand lumens is the ones that you chose 20, 000. uh oh well these are different do you have a 30 yeah uh, this is up to twenty two thousand yeah, yeah. lumens i think we do have a, a nine thousand lumen yeah the, in the the plan the light plan said each light would be nine thousand lumens um so as Back long as you that. don't go above that per light, I don't remember where I found it. <laughs> I did find it in there somewhere. There's a lot of numbers. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You, you probably find it a lot faster than I will. Uh, let's see if it's in our schedule. 9,000 lumen LED. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you have to match up your marks for Ys and the YEs, but those were the inside lights um, in the garden center itself, which just Ys and YEs. Um, yep. So, yeah, and the way I judge things when I look at this, that would be fully shielded. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you could send me that cut sheet, 
I can put that in the package. Yep. No problem. Um, really wish I'd taken a picture of Bradford to show you. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so I think that we get a good idea of the scope of the project. Um, board members have any other sort of details of application or whatnot that they need to have to continue our discussion here? Perfect. Uh, so, yep, get in there. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Um, so, we were discussing earlier, it seems to be some consensus that this is, you know, not really not much change uh, in this facility, um, you know, from what is currently there um, related to the amount of customers and, you know, that seems to be the nature of the application. Um, we do have sort of one parking and loading issue to navigate through the, the, re the regs. And um, that question is whether to classify this as high turnover customer traffic or regular customer traffic. Um, and now, yes, Sharon? I, I guess I would uh, think of regular customer traffic. I mean, you, yeah. don't, you don't zip into tractor supply, throw something in the truck and zip out. You know? I mean, it, right. you know, it's, it's much slower than that, I think. So like, regular traffic seems like it could really interpret it. Absolutely. Any other board members have any, have any thoughts on this before we dive in? Righty. And also, of course, they put the Starbucks in the drive thru. I'm going to change the story. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't know about a Starbucks, but I'd, I'd be down for a Dunks. <laughs> and so, so, I mean, so the regs sort of direct us to refer to the administrative officer with his Meredith on this if there's any uncertainty, um, which, um, you know, Meredith seemed to think that it wasn't 100% clear for a tractor supply, is, you know, what it is. Well, yeah, I mean, it. I'm supposed to make a determination that it puts in there. And I think because it was sort of in between yeah. and the board ultimately makes the decision, but my suggestion is that it would be regular um, traffic, not the high turnover that then pushes the parking requirement down. Um, and so there's, you know, I mean, the number of parking spaces right now is 84. If it was the high customer turnover under our numbers, it would need one more parking space. That doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. No. I think the regular customer traffic parking interpretation fits with what we all see there. I don't know if I ever see that side lot parking lot space full. Um, you know, and when I go there, it's usually a Friday or a Saturday. Maybe on a Saturday on the weekends, it'll be it'll Maybe. Have some. Yeah, but, but it's uh, not. It's not gonna. No. I've. I always find parking there. Um, I. I don't see that they need an extra parking space. So if the board's good with making the determination that it's a regular customer traffic, that's easy to write into the, to the decision. Yeah, I think that's a rational explanation and I'm glad we're in agreement there. Um, so the next topic here is the, uh, you know, the landscaping, which I think uh, we're here in on board to sort of come to some sort of uh, um, creative creative way to um, get through it. Um, Meredith, do you have any guidance for how we how, how we how we tackle this? Basically, it's I mean, the first question is, does the board think that this project falls within the exemption, right? Because the entire landscaping provision, you can say it does not apply when development does not change impervious cover, mm -hmm. no soil is disturbed and development does not impact landscaping. That's the operative sentence of this clause. The, um, you know, intention, yeah. where it's intended to imply, that's guidance. It doesn't matter if that's the intention, if what they wrote, the specific criteria that they wrote, apply, right, to the situation. Um, it, it, was, it was an error in the way it was drafted that it captures more than was intended. Um, I don't think the, the board yeah. and the zoning administrator are required to right. apply the language as it's written. Exactly. Sharon. I just would, I guess, uh, sort of add my voice to the thing that that exemption does apply, um, especially because they're not moving any parking. They're not landscaping anything else. I mean, they're just really moving nothing there. Um, and so I feel like uh, 
without the regulation specifically saying that they need to step it up a notch that they should not have to. Yep, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in agreement with that interpretation. I guess I would, I would, I would agree too, and maybe put it a separate way if we had a residential permit come in and someone has a deck with no roof on it and they're going to come in and they're going to put a roof on their deck we might not require a landscaping plan because they're going to put a roof on an already constructed deck and granted that this is a larger scale commercial property um, but we do have pretty good evidence that there is no disturbance going on no expansion outside the existing you know footprint it's already a concrete pad um it's a paved parking lot um yes i'm i'm, I'm okay with that Anyone on our uh, Gene or Michael, you guys have anything to add? Well, I do. In, in section, I mean, from reviewing this and, and, and reading section three, two or three, the, so there's existing. You have to start over, Gene. I we couldn't quite hear you from the beginning. I'm, I'm reviewing on three, two or three here on the section. There's currently six to seven trees right now, as as was mentioned. But there's a recommended to nine larger trees and 15 medium to small trees. Is that? If, if the if the if the provision applies, yeah. yeah. There's added street trees, added shade trees that would need to be added, um, and 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 put in. But the whole question, we don't even get there if the exemption applies at the beginning. I understand. Thank you. Mm hmm. Is that it, Gene? Yes, yeah, sir. Michael. Yeah, I'm all in favor of the exemption. And I'm not going to bring up the point about the utility right away because it sounds like everyone is going to be in agreement. So they're exempt from any additional vegetation requirements. Wonderful. Um, so looks like we're OK on parking. Um, okay. Um, can I go back to one thing on the parking real quick? Yes. Um, then this question is for Meredith. Um, in that section, Meredith, you had, there was a reference to, it's something like for, if there's 40 spaces, you need to have one EV charging station set aside and you didn't have that in red. So um, we don't have to tackle that. Yep. Yeah, Cause it's, if it will, if the development will create 40 parking spaces. No parking spaces are being created at all. Right. So even though we're sort of, we're, we're narrowing down the parking spaces, we don't have to, we're not triggering that inadvertently, are we? Yeah, we're not, we're not, we aren't reducing the actual number of parking spaces. What, what the analysis is about the minimum number of parking spaces all went into was, um, do they currently have enough parking spaces? Right, and so the minimum required is 56, um, but they aren't changing the use, so it, it it doesn't matter. And they can have up to, if we go with regular parking, they could have up to 112 parking spaces without special board approval. So if right now, if they came back and they said, uh, we actually want to add more parking spaces, just draw them in somewhere else. Yep. As long as they met the regulations, they could go up to 112 with administrative approval without having to come to the board, as long as they weren't, you know, adding too much impervious surface or something along those lines and otherwise triggering board, triggering board approval. But yeah, the EV charging stations aren't triggered right now. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure we're not inadvertently triggering. Nope. Okay. Uh, we're not. Uh, I'm good then. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Um, We've already gone over the, the lighting. Um, thank you for providing that cut sheet. We'll just make sure that that um, gets included in the you know the condition and the in the final permit materials. And um, I think we've gotten through the the major issues here. Unless Meredith thinks we missed anything. No, I think as long as the board is happy with how I summarized the section three two zero seven design and compatibility, um, there's no. There's no really red in there until the very end of the staff comment because technically I can't make that final determination. <laughs> but my understanding and my read through of these is that a lot of these architectural compatibility um, and design standards either don't apply or the application clearly meets them given what's happening, mm -hmm. right? That it's a new aspect, a new type of 
structure being added. You know, a greenhouse is not going to look like your brick and mortar store. It's clearly going to look differently, um, but they've echoed, you know, the triangular shape on the front of the building, all that stuff. I think it com it it complies with all the applicable section 3207 standards. The board just, if the board has any issues, they need to speak up. But if they agree with me, then go for it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I maybe just confirm architecturally. So the height of the proposed store in relation to the proposed addition in relation to the existing store. How high is? Yeah. Just take a look at that elevation profile again, I guess. Yeah. Oh, so it clearly similar. breaks it up, right? It's clearly, it's making it even less of a solid block of a building. It's making right. it more interesting yeah. um, with, you know, your very different sections. Um, it, it, to me, and you've, you know, it seems to, match right in Absolutely. without being i think the retail term is soft <laughs> yeah. Soft. Yeah. Soften. softens um, yes <laughs> so i guess slightly unrelated so we didn't talk about drainage it's not necessarily a big issue but could be a consideration so right now you have a concrete pad um and you know the water flow is obviously somewhere on the site i don't know if you've done any analysis of this um, versus you have the roofs coming in is that going to change the flow of water at all anyway it's not and the, the intent is um you know we're adding covering but we're we're still spilling that collected rainwater back out on to the ground to sheet flow as if this roof covering wasn't there before um it kind of really does not change any of the drainage profiles so will there be any like gutters on these or whatnot or is it just kind of kind of sheet off no, there's gutters and we bring it down and um, we have um, basically perforated drains at the at grade, you know, so it's not just dumping water off the top on anybody who's walking out there or walking out the doors, but we do collect into a gutter and then just um, basically splash it to grade. It's uh, basically what we're doing about everywhere. My understanding from the application packet was that there were some drains that go into a stormwater system, but is that not the case? Uh, we shouldn't be having any, we're not tying into any storm. It would only be surface water, sheet draining, just like that, that area does today. Okay. Okay. Did DPW uh, weigh in on this? Yeah, DPW had no no issues on okay. any of it whatsoever. Okay. Um, they were me. they were quite quite good with us. I actually all 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 three of our engineers looked at it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's good to know. Have you thought about trying to capture any of that rainwater off the clearer roof to use as water for your plants that you've got out there? This is just a, this is I'm not a, I'm not on the board. I'm just staff. But I you, echo that question. I have you know question. rain barrels. There you go. <laughs> Yeah. free water <laughs> I, yeah I, I i yeah i mean i understand i do that for my garden at home so i you know i i can't say that no it hasn't been thought of but that's just not the path i, I don't know how, how to better how to better respond to that I, I think that the concern is just to to make sure maybe you can confirm this that the installation of the roofs and how it drains off the roofs is not going to cause the water to go in any different direction off of the site or direct it to another storm drain that it is now that maybe can't handle it or um whatnot the, okay the current grade it goes into the two, two storm drains which are connected to the retention pond now back as far as i know and, okay. and i'm not a not an architect but the way it, I have not seen in any, any of those stores water going in any other different direction than what it currently does now. Yeah. That's my personal experience because that was a question of mine as well. Where does water go? Yeah. yeah. Especially in the winter. But um, Rutland, St. Albans, Bradford, um, no issues. Okay. Uh, colleague to colleague because that's just the first question I asked. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Aaron. <laughs> no, no problem. Just a note, I don't think you would need to come back for any kind of zoning permit if you decide you do want to install rain barrels. Yeah. Right? Okay. Even okay. even for I mean it's not it's not really a structure, well, it's just collecting water. 
it's a yeah water tank inside something. It's not a new structure. It's already impervious surface. So if you go, hmm, we actually could make that work. You know, depending on how big they are, call me. But you're not going to have to come back to these guys. <laughs> Ironically, they sell them. Yeah, yeah I was I was say. Say, we, we've got we've got tanks. What size? Yeah, <laughs> two seventy five out back. But we're wonderful. Right. Wonderful. Um, Okay, well, board members don't have any other questions. I would accept a, uh, a motion to, to move along here. Go ahead. Uh, so I would make a motion to uh, grant major site plan approval for the construction of a 3,000 plus uh, square foot greenhouse at 352 River Street, including associated site plan changes, um, the expansion of the retail sales and service as presented in the application, along with the additional uh, lighting cut sheets, um, subject to the following conditions of mm. approval. No, nope. nope, you don't need that. No, nope. nope. along with the, uh, those additional lighting cut sheets. Period. Motion made. Second. second. No. Motion by Sharon and a second by uh, Kevin for approval with a, a few uh, conditions. I think let's just review the condition first about the. The lighting cut no. sheets. Oh no, because the I included that. It was that. technically entered. It was entered. It was entered because yes. he was able to show it to Got everybody it. who's here. So he's just gonna get it to me. Okay. You know, it's it's been entered. <laughs> so we have a motion for approval. And um is there any discussion on the motion? Okay. With that, I will uh, start a roll call vote here. Sharon, how do you vote? Uh, yes. Kevin. Yes. Uh, Gene? Yes. Michael? Yes. Rob votes yes. That is unanimously approved. Thank you very much. You will, Meredith will follow up with the details. Yeah. So okay. we'll we'll get the written decision out as soon as possible. Technically, um, the board has 45 days from today to get the decision out. We work very hard to do it much, much sooner than that. Um, and because there's no conditions on the approval, um, once the decision is drafted, reviewed by the chair signed, we'll be issuing that and the permit at the same time. Um, and then there's a 30 day appeal period um, from the date that the decision is signed. Um, and, and so technically you're not really supposed to start construction until that appeal period is over. Um, anything you do in that appeal period is at your own risk if somebody appeals, but we haven't had any comments from any neighbors. So um, we will be in touch as try soon. Try to be a good neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> we will try and uh, get that to you as soon as possible. Awesome. Okay, Thank and Meredith, I will, I will send you this cut sheet here in about five minutes. Perfect. And if, when I'm in Bradford next week, not this week, I'll take more pictures if you want to stop by and I'll show them to you. That'd be awesome. And feel free to email me or stop in with ideas if you decide you want to go with the rain barrel route. Oh, <laughs> thank you. One more. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. You're welcome. Welcome. All righty. We have one more order of business for this evening, um, which is the election of chair and vice chair. So just we'll just context there that this happens every year in August. Yep, every yeah. year in August. The it first meeting in August. It doesn't have to be the first meeting in August. It's in um, August. It just has to be in August. So we, since we're like, we're actually going to have a meeting the first weekend. Let's put it on the agenda if people felt like they really needed to move it because they were missing somebody that wanted to be one of those positions, then. Um, People could say, nope, let's bump it. But my understanding is we are not missing anybody who wanted to try and be in one of those positions. And we have um, five people here. That is a majority of the um, sitting regular board members. Well, it's my recollection, Sharon, you can correct me if, if you see it differently, but I remember that not attending the meetings puts you at risk of get, being elected an officer. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly did happen. <laughs> it, it has happened. It has happened to me. I think I've missed three meetings since I've been on the board. <laughs> well, in that case, I'd like to make a motion to uh, elect Rob Goodwin, the chair of the board. Second. Second by Gene. Motion by Sharon for the election of myself as the chair. Does anyone have any discussion on the motion? Yeah, like, do you want it? 
No, I think I think you've done been done, have done a great job in in the short time that you've been chair, Rob, and uh, I wish you many more years of uh, of uh, <laughs> of uh, board product productivity. Well, thank you, Kevin. Um, I guess we will we'll, we'll vote. Sharon, how do you vote? Uh, yes. Kevin. Yes. Gene. Yes. Michael. Yes. Rob, I'll, I'll abstain. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were here. I guess you can abstain. Uh, I will make a motion um, to elect uh, Sharon Allen as the next chair, um, just as a vice chair. Vice chair, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> I am not a candidate this uh, this year, so I'm uh, uh, passing the torch. I'll second that motion. Um, so, is there any discussion? Um, no. Gene. So, so Kevin, he's not. He's passing the torch. Is that what he said? Kevin, yeah. that's what that's what I said, Gene. Okay, right. we have a motion on the table with a, with a second by myself. Sharon, how do you vote? I think I will abstain as well. Thank you, <laughs> Kevin. How do you vote? I vote yes. Gene, yes. Michael, yes. And Rob votes yes. Hey, welcome. Uh, thank you. For anybody who's not aware, when Sharon served on the board previously, she also served as yes. vice chair for a time. So she's got experience chairing meetings and acting as vice chair. <laughs> um, and so it's, I, you know, for anybody who wasn't aware when we had this open seat, we had had discussions with city council, um, or at least the city manager's office, um, that we really wanted to make sure that we were adding people with experience in the leadership officer roles so that we had more of a breadth of, of people available should we have another abrupt change of leadership um, after what happened when Kate left, when nobody really wanted to be chair or vice chair or felt like they had the experience to do it or both. Um, so we're very, very thankful, at least down in the planning department, that Sharon threw her hat in and got appointed thank you it's very fun to be back exactly say so wonderful welcome. to have you as vice chair again <laughs> well, welcome back chair thank you thank you services oh. so our next regular meeting will be august 15th do we have applications we do we have two applications um and i'm going to preview it for people who are hmm. here just in case somebody has to recuse themselves from anything um you can see them on our pending applications page we have an appeal from a um, uh, zoning administrator, me, determination um, about a non-conforming use at Four Cumming Street. So this is gonna be revisiting the contractor's yard off of Cumming Street. Um, and in this case, their parking situation out front of the building um, and in their side alley. Um, and the appellant there is uh, one of the neighbors, David Wells. And then the second application is a, um, it's a boundary line adjustment um, uh, for a parcel on Chestnut Hill. And normally that would be administrative, but it needs to go through the board because approval is gonna have to be conditioned on city council approving a change to a city's open space agreement that was entered into by with prior property owners. It's a fun little complicated. It's, I'm sorry, is the city council going so, to need to act prior? Right, that's no, after. So the development review board, if they approve the boundary line adjustment, yeah. the approval will be conditioned upon the city council okay. approving changes to the open space agreement. And that's not something as a zoning administrator, sure. I'm allowed to do. Right. That's the only reason it's going before the board. Um, you'll get the full rundown in the staff report. So, <laughs> but I want to just preview it in case somebody's like, oh, not, you know, I can't, I can't be part of it. Yeah. So the appeal, Mike Miller will be staff again. Yep. Mike yes. Miller will be staffing the appeal. I will be in the audience as needed as a witness um, oh. slash defendant because it's my determination, but you may not need me at all. It may just be Mike and the appellant. Perfect. Okay. 
with that, thank you very much. Um, we'll see you all on uh, August 15th, and I will accept a motion to move along. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Kevin and second by Sharon to adjourn this meeting. Uh, Sharon, how do you vote? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Michael? Yes. Gene? Yes. I vote yes. Thank you very much, everybody. All right. Have a good one. Thank see you, you guys. See you in two weeks.